my favorite was a, if I told you guys it was great, uh, I, was at a, uh, I was at a a public tasting once and a guy came, uh, came by and said, uh, he, was, he was asking me a question. And I thought that what he had asked me was, uh, was you know, what proportion of grapes is in, what, what, what particular grapes do I think are planted in the Rossi vineyard that the Orion comes from? And so I was starting to answer that question. And then he interrupted me and said, no, no, I just wanted to know, is the Orion made 100% from whatever's in that field? And I said, I want to put that on the label. 100% <laughs> from whatever's out in that field. <laughs> I just love that. Yeah, that was perfect. Now the, uh, the mouthfeel rounds out wow. over there. Do you put this through, fruit through a destemmer? That varies. Since, uh, I don't do anything. Except with a particular batch of fruit. Totally depends on the fruit. Absolutely. I just, you know, every year I just sort of look at whatever is right and what we're actually making the wine from, in other words, rather than my preconceptions. And uh, just say, okay, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I de stem, sometimes I don't de stem, sometimes I partly de stem, sometimes we throw it at hot, sometimes we throw it at really cool, you know, it just depends. Yeah. Basically, the Orion, the Orion is recently, though, I mean, I've been, I've been doing this after all since 1986, so. <clears throat> I've done most of the experiments that I think I need to do. So at this point from the Rossi vineyard, um, this vineyard actually, I think this was not the standard, as I remember. In fact, it was interesting to me because, um, you know, I have my own here on the side. Uh, now, this was actually interesting because I, I crushed all this. I harvested it myself <clears throat> in a trailer on the back of my Land Rover and drove back to Bolinas. And then, you know, I. I Put it through the my crusher destemmer um, and into the small fermenter that I was just talking about with the uh, you know terroir lot that we dumped on the on the driveway. The same fermenter, um, and I was really really tired, so I didn't clean up anything after crushing. But you know, it's been a really long day. Uh, so there was a huge pile of stems that were right next to the to the crusher destemmer. And when I got the next morning, the first thing I wanted to do was to throw those away. And then I picked them up and I tasted them, they're absolutely wonderful. I'd never made a cereal before, in fact, I very rarely tasted one. Um, and um, I thought that was wonderful. It was like a kind of a, a aromatic, a warm olive oil, something like that. I mean, it was, it was, it was a taste you would you'd get fairly frequently in, in Hermitage. Uh, and I thought, I'm throwing this away. Um, so I added it back in. No kidding. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was a real lesson that the only reason for leaving uh, the stems in, particularly with a wine that's as naturally, um, you yeah, know, long-lived as, as, as Sarah would be, uh, is for, it's a spice. Nobody ever talks about it that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Talking about, well, you need this for backbone or something, as though all that you're going to get from it is going to be, you know, some kind of tannin or another. Mm -hmm. Not fish, or is it actually a, you know, whatever. But then you think, well, <laughs> what does it taste like? I mean, that's the really the issue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can get these things, of course, you can test the DNA, but it really doesn't tell you anything. Uh, I mean, at least it, it tells you what something isn't, but it doesn't tell you what it is. Is that true? I don't yeah. know anything about DNA testing. Well, the thing yeah. that it doesn't tell you anything about is clones. Ah, okay. Yeah, all it can really do is, is make a very basic test <clears throat> that will say, well, this is or is not Sarah. It could tell you that. Mm -hmm. But if it was Sarah, it wouldn't tell you anything about what kind of clone it was. And you consider Pinot Noir, where there are maybe at least a couple of thousand known clones. I mean, well, what used to be called, what was it? I forget if it was Napa Gamay or Gamay Beaujolais. The, yes, it was, it was Napa, it was, I'm pretty sure it was Gamay Beaujolais. I don't think that was ever made into a good bottle of wine <laughs> for the entire existence of the plant. You know, and it turns out what that really is, is Pinot Noir. Now, okay, so you know that by DNA it's Pinot Noir. Well, what does this tell you? By why that makes terrible wine, and yet the same, the same thing is planted at Romane Conti. You know, it doesn't, it's not telling you much. So, <clears throat> now, I, mean, I, I think the clonal thing is, is absolutely crucial. Is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they, they brought over a lot of things. But I mean, Petitia, but Petitia are called as such as a the most desirable clone of Sira from the most desirable mass on the, on the Hill of Hermitage was in California by at least 1870. Hmm. Um, and interestingly enough, another point that people don't realize is that at that point, nobody thought wow. that what was being grown at Hermitage 
was the same as what was being grown at Coco Right, were entirely that's different vines, different shape of berry, no resemblance. One was called Serene and the other was called Siam. Uh, and not supposed to be, all of a sudden you come Phylloxera and it's all the same thing, it's all Syrah. So, you know, and Serene was also in California as of the 1860s or 70s because Hilgard and his experiments uh, at Berkeley talks about Serene and its various qualities. So, so that was brought back also. And have all these cuttings been lost to the end Nobody has, any, has a clue what happened. That's the point. I mean, clearly, whatever Petit Sierra yeah. now is, it's not um, Sierra. It, you know, it, it is yeah. definitely it doesn't look not that, Well, it just doesn't yeah. look that way. You deal with it. But there are, I mean, I think really that Carol Meredith was the author, really, of most of the DNA yeah. tests yeah. at, at um, Davis. I think she's found maybe 12 different varieties so far of completely different. Uh, varieties of grape that are called petite syrup by their vineyard owners. Really? And I myself have come across at least four because I've been making uh, petite for years, you know. And I mean, you look at this stuff and you think, I can't, this can't possibly be petite syrup. And they'll say, that's what we, that's what we call pets out here, you know. So. How many sources of petite syrup have you Made one, oh, I suppose all told, maybe six or seven at this mm. point. Yeah, you know, various amounts. I mean, sometimes small, sometimes large. Yeah.